Hi, I'm Jackie with Veterans Rideshare, and today I have the man behind the mission and the magic. This is Chris Pozak. He is our founder, our president. He's an Army veteran, and he's here to share all the amazing things we have in the works today to help in veteran homelessness, to help deliver packages better, to help the world on a global scale. You will not want to miss this. So, Chris, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks a lot for taking the time, Jackie. I sure appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, thank you for taking the time. You seem to always be launching initiatives, not sleeping. I don't even know how you do it. <laughs> yeah, this morning was a little extra early one. This morning, I think uh, it was like 1.40 that uh, I awoke from my slumber. <laughs> That's incredible. It's probably because you always have ideas on how to make the world a better place. That's my theory. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in my brain. So it probably keep a lot of people up probably 24-7 sometimes. <laughs> well, I think it's pretty exciting. So for those of you tuning in, um, I mentioned Veterans Ride Share. That's just one of many entities that Chris is running, and it's just amazing. We've got VRS Trucking as well. We've got um, Pentagon Rides. We've got Patriotic Villages. We've got VetX coming, which is like FedEx, but with veterans. So Chris, I'll really kind of let you dive in with which initiative you'd like to start with first, because I just can't wait to hear what. <laughs> well, you know, um, everything has time and place uh, on, on how it must be built. And uh, Veterans Rideshare, um, had to start so that we can get a concentration of vehicles and and personnel throughout the state vedex has been on my mind for uh, almost as long as vrs has but uh, to provide people an overnight package delivery service without the network to be able to execute then you're going to have a service failure so i had to just put that on the back burner and table that one for a little bit later uh four years ago and we're a little bit later now um, far slower than I wanted to be, but nonetheless, we're, we're about on the cusp of it. Basically, uh, FedEx will provide an overnight package delivery service that'll be less expensive than FedEx and UPS, higher level of service with tracking abilities, so on and so forth, like they have now, but they didn't have when I originally came up with the idea. And it'll put more veterans to work to, to accomplish the mission. So since Scott West has done an amazing job um, building out portions of VRS, and getting uh, some school route contracts throughout the state, as well as additional new business with hiring some of the marketing people and so on and so forth. Now, since we'll have a concentration of vehicles and personnel throughout the whole state, now all we need is in order to make FedEx a reality is that sort location. That sort location will be in the middle uh, of the state for logistical purposes, meaning that there'll be a car coming up from the Colexco Brawley area. There'll be uh, that that will connect with the car in the San Diego area. That San Diego car will roll up to uh, Central California, um, as well as cars from Los Angeles, from San Francisco, from Inland Empire, and they'll all converge on the sort location at night. Arrive about midnight. The sort personnel will sort all the packages that go back to the respective locations where they have to be delivered, and then the morning crew uh, will get them delivered. So now, now it's now it's a reality. It's a, it's a real close reality. Uh, we've got the packages already made. Um, the software is already in place. So now we're just waiting for the ability to make sure that we can deliver and we don't have a service failure. So that's that's the biggest thing. Uh, we want to make sure before we roll out anything that there's not a service failure. That's really exciting, though, to think that there's an option for package delivery because we all know the standards. We've seen the trucks driving around, you know, and thinking that there could be a vet X. I can just I can just see it now and knowing that we're helping put veterans back to work while they're delivering our packages, I think is really exciting. So, yeah. And, and again, uh, I want it to be an opportunity for other veterans uh, in, in either different areas or states. Uh, I haven't decided exactly how I want to do it to be entrepreneurs. <laughs> Because one of the most enlightening thing is uh, enlightening things to do is to take a veteran, not only give him a job, but to let him go and be their own boss. That's and then they succeed and excel with it. That's really good stuff. So, um, but yeah, they and they'd operate if we make it a franchise uh, uh, play. Then they'd operate underneath you know the, our logo and our stuff, and and we just teach them how to do it. Oh, that's excellent. Well, I know that a lot of veterans come out and they do want to work for themselves. They've got the drive. They've got the discipline. They have all of that already from years of training. And so why not put it to work for them with, I love the franchise idea. I think that's a, an excellent way 
to get them back on their feet, get them with their own business. And it's a nice amount of freedom uh, for success. Very much. And a lot of, a lot of people that we have when they come into the doors, you, some people just want a job and some people need that, that constant, but there's a uh, quite a few people that come through that are a little bit more grandiose than just a job. And, you know, I don't want to lose them uh, or the ability to work with them just because we don't have those kind of opportunities available. So I think it's vital that, that we allow those things to happen as well. Well, I think that's incredible. So for those of you tuning in, do be on the lookout for VetX. That will be coming your way very soon. So um, would you like to discuss Patriotic Villages? Because that one has me so excited. I mean, you... Uh, yeah. You are That's making miracles tough. happen. <laughs> well, I'm not really making anything happen yet, but we're, we're again, one of those things that uh, it had to come at a certain time. We've, we've been in this property in Ramona uh, almost a year now. At the end of this month, 9-1 uh, of last year is when we uh, first got on the property. So we needed space in order to be able to uh, attempt to build houses uh, that were self-sustaining, green energy. And all that stuff was just the uh, crazy stuff in my head uh, a few years ago. And so we moved in, we got our first truck by happenstance through a weird course of events. We then had to concentrate on VRS trucking more so than anything else. And it was thrust upon our shoulders and, and I got big shoulders. So I was, I was all over carrying it. But um, so then, but Patriot Villages is now it's time. My brain just can't stop thinking about how to put it all put it all together. And the first thing is, is that uh, it's and none of this technology is mine. This isn't like, oh, my God, I came up with this, this great thing. It's not how it is. Basically, people started developing ways to recycle plastic and make all kinds of things with it. There's a company out of South America currently that builds um, basically giant Lego blocks and they use that to create houses and they're very successful. The name escapes me. Um, but all credit to them, you know, they figured out how to put it in a mold. They figured out how to get it to uh, in a cooling pool after and, and how to pull it out and how they linked it together. My design to theirs is similar. Um, of course, I think mine's better for a myriad of reasons. But, um, and I've shared some of the stuff with you, some of the sketches, some of the diagrams I'm working on, some CAD software to build. Basically, our blocks will be uh, airtight and watertight. And that gives them an advantage. Um, they will, uh, obviously, since they're made out of plastic, they'll solve a lot of problems that we're incurring, that the world is experiencing now. So you've got a lot of these um, stories that uh, Texas size um, pile of garbage is, is in the Pacific Ocean. Um, you've got Indonesia with three of the largest, most, the, three of the most polluted rivers in the world are right in that country and it's not a very big country. Um, if you watch a video of that stuff, in one of the videos, the, um, the as the river runs through the center of the city, you can't see water. You can only see the plastic and trash. Oh my gosh. So there's problems. And then they're talking about now in the rainwater that they're picking up uh, plastic in that uh, throughout different areas of the world. So um there's there's problems that that need to be addressed and the 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 root of that problem is um is these guys and girls sitting on the side of the street How, what a, what a travesty really um so to build houses out of the plastic and then to power um through green energy um you know solar or wind <clears throat> however we have to do it uh originally when i started all my calculations and all my crazy stuff that's in my head, uh, I came up with, it was going to be six panels. Well, it started at 12, but then I got it down to six solar panels per house. Because one of the things that needs that the houses need to have is the ability to, for air conditioning and heat. So when we started, and we needed similarly, uh, conversely, we needed that same thing in Ramona um, for the office space because the office that we have, the big warehouse, didn't have any air conditioning or heat. So, you know, the team here was just, it was not a good a good situation. So when I started hunting for split systems, one of the things I was looking for is which systems I thought I could produce the most condensation from. 
to capture that condensation at water source. So each one of the houses will have a split system, air conditioning, heat system, um, in order, and also a humidifier built in to where it can collect all of this moisture. So we take the moisture from there, and then we, uh, we have to take that and make it potable. Uh, you just can't take uh, water out of the dehumidifier and drink it. That's going to probably not be very healthy for very long. Um, so we built a solar distiller. And basically the solar distiller uses a reverse condensation process to distill the water. Basically uh, built a big, huge wooden box. Uh, you've got video feed of it. Huge, huge wooden box, uh, black pool liner on the inside made out of vinyl. Um, put it in the sun in Southern California in August. And uh, all of a sudden, and put glass over the top to make it airtight. And the next thing you know, water droplets will condense onto the glass. The glass is pitched so it comes down to a trough and it's distilled pure water. One of the problem with distilled water is that it's potable, that's a good thing. Um, it loses some of the base elements that you get through wells and so on and so forth. Um, and one of those ways that I can combat that is by adding some uh, Himalayan sea salt. Himalayan sea salt in small quantities will add back into those base elements so, because water has some nutritional value to it too. Um, uh, it can have some bad stuff in there too. That's why distilling it is better. Um, and from there, we were able to, per air conditioning unit, gather five gallons of, uh, just shy of five gallons of water a day um, in the non-humid Southern California area. And then we were able to distill just over a gallon and a half a day. It's between a gallon and a half and two gallons. So um, human consumption is about a half a gallon a day. So per unit, per distiller, I can make sure that uh, the veteran in that, that's the inhabitant in patriotic villages uh, can at least sustain. And then we'll reclaim a lot of the, the, the gray water and so on and so forth. So we have the ability now to produce potable water for the boys and girls. And if you don't have water, you don't have anything. Because we can last as humans three days without water. Uh, we can add, we can last some of us longer than others, uh, three weeks without food uh, about, but uh, you know, I probably last six. Uh, however, the, um, the food source is secondary to the water. And then the, obviously the shelter. So now we've got the shelter through the, the recycled plastic we'll be able to create all the parts of the shelter with recycled plastic as well. Bed frames, dinnerware, plasticware for the mess hall. Um, anything that we need in there, we will be able most likely to build out of plastic. If not, then we'll re use recycled metal. So now we've got shelter and we've got uh, power through solar. So we'll use solar systems, like I said, um, and so those are your, your base elements. And then we turn to aquaponics uh, to uh, fuel a food source, food, food source through uh, vegetables, fruits, um, fish and aquaponics is one of the main necessities. So all those combined will, will solve that entire purpose. The veterans coming as soon as we have an operational deal, uh, and I anticipate myself to be one of the first ones to live in it for a week to make sure it's all good before I put anybody else in there. But then um, we'll go uh, searching for some veterans and um, uh, put them in the, in the deal and see what they like to do. Then we'll re-educate them, uh, rehabilitate them, re-educate them, and redeploy them into a field that they actually have interest in doing. So it's easier for them to reassimilate. assimilate um, And while they're in the program, they'll be able to live for free. So uh, plus get paid. That's incredible. So for those of you tuning in, Patriotic Villages is a way to help house homeless veterans and to do it in a green way that's using recycled materials, solar power, everything is um, renewable energies. And we are providing food source, uh, shelter, everything, which I think is remarkable. But then beyond that, it's more than just a roof over their head. The fact that you're going to be re-educating, rehabilitating, and then redeploying them back into the real world after they've had this incredible experience for free. I think that's truly giving back um, to the communities of those who have served our nation and they come back and for one reason or another, they sort of lost their way. So I mm -hmm. think that Patriotic Villages is a really crucial piece to this puzzle. So thank you so much for coming up with this idea. I can't wait to see 
see how it works. Can't wait to see your week in the, the shelter. I actually kind of want to come out there and try it too. I've always loved camping. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know, and it's funny because if you think about it, given these guys and girls the opportunity to do what they want to do, what they have an interest in doing. Sometimes, you know, when you go in the military, if your ASVAB score isn't right or there's not enough slots or whatever, you really get sometimes pushed into a job that you didn't want to do. Just because you're a diesel mechanic, that doesn't mean that that's what you wanted to do. Just because you're a truck driver, that's not what you wanted to do. So there's an opportunity for them to say, you know, because between the companies and between Patriot Villages itself, there's going to be a ton of need for um, uh, horticulturists, electricians, plumbers, um, uh, pipe fitters, uh, just any any trade, welders, um, anything that we uh, that they have an interest in, we want to find a position for them because that's when somebody loves what they do, it's not a job, then, right? So um, if we can make that happen, that would be perfect. That's incredible. Well, I love the mission. I love what you're looking to do and that you're looking to take all of this awful waste that's just laying around and repurpose it for something good. And then you could even go on a bigger scale. I know this is something you've looked at doing as well. Um, once you've got these units built and you've got this wonderful mold, you can help disaster areas. Can you talk about that a little as well? Yeah. So my thought is, is that the number one, there's a lot of different things. First and foremost, when we start building the houses that gives us the ability to have those veterans that are going to be in those jobs to build those blocks the ability to take those and sell them as a kit basically for really anybody um and it's a way for them to generate money for patriotic villages because eventually we're going to need more money to put one in every state across the country and it's it's imperative that the patriotic villages for the veterans is the first step to make sure it proof of concept, but we can help all the homeless people. We can help all the cities with all with homeless people laying on their streets that they don't want laying on their streets. The homeless people really probably don't want to be living on their streets. And and also to be clear and frank, the villages isn't gonna work for everybody because some people are in positions because they want to be, not because they just by happenstance are. So Patriot Villages isn't going to be a cakewalk. It's, you know, they've, they've got to do stuff. They've got to be part of the community in order to make it work. And they've got to be a valuable source in that team in order to make it work and pull across the finish line. But as far as natural disasters, you know, you see Red Cross and FEMA and all these places that uh, ship all these winters of hurricane. The displacement in New Orleans when everybody was staying in the, in the, uh, the dome there, um, when people are displaced and, and got to travel three, four, five hundred miles in order to get to an available hotel, all these things, you know, these, these, the material can be used to create cargo containers, um, and you can drop these anywhere. Uh, coincidentally, of course, FedEx, when it becomes national, will need planes that will be big enough to drop these. So, um, but, um, the you can you can ready make these kits they land on the ground and there's pictographs so regardless of language um uh capability to put anything together mechanical smarts any anything like that you take this off here you put it here you put this here you put this here next thing you know everything's in the kit the house the power the water and the ability to create food not right away but that doesn't mean that some disaster relief, MREs for lack of better terms, you know, meals ready to eat in the military. That doesn't mean that those can't be included to, to sustain a family for 30 days or something like that. So you'll have these ready-made kits that people could put up in three hours, five hours, and it will have everything in there, including everything from the inside. Third world countries, you've got 8 billion people on the earth. Uh, you've got 3 billion connected uh, internet, uh, uh, join me uh, apps and uh, Google Hangouts and all these things. I would imagine that if you could cooperate amongst 8 billion instead of 3 or 8 billion instead of 3 billion, that you would have uh, a lot more success and efficiency in finding solutions to the world's problems, disease, um, cancer. Um, anything 
if you're only got three billion people connected, but you can connect eight billion between these dead and shipped and having an internet connection and the ability to turn on a computer that nobody's ever seen before. But between pictographs and the language that you you can put on the computer for the to walk them through based upon where you're dropping the containers. I think that you can connect a lot more than three billion, that's for sure. I don't know if you get all the way to eight, but I, I'm pretty sure you can connect more than three billion. So I think that that would lead to a lot of good stuff. That's remarkable. You, you're always on this mission to keep going like every day, bigger, better, harder, more effective, a more massive impact on the world. And I just think it's incredible to be a part of the team and to watch this unfold and to be a part of spreading this incredible news, because I feel like this is something that, um, yes, of course, it'll benefit your local area. It'll benefit veterans, but it's so much bigger than that. That's just the start. That's and that's an incredible beginning. I think it make everybody tired. Tony's laughing about that line. <laughs> I could hear her. <laughs> Sometimes when I, when I come up with stuff and then the glaze in their eyes, when they, uh, I was talking with Tony about this last week before she went on vacation, you know, it's like they look at me and they want to really engage me. And they're like, right, that sounds great. That absolutely sounds great. Can we get back to work now, boss? And, but, you know, I think I make everybody tired. I really do. Um, and sometimes when I feel that way, then I just uh, go in the, what Tony calls the lab and I go back to the lab and just start doing stuff. And then I'm like, oh, here you go. I did it already. So you don't have to hear about how it's going to work. Here it is right here. So, um, you know, uh, it's, there's always a next step. There's always something else. And all of this leads to, to the next thing, but eventually, eventually we'll get to where we want to be. And then I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be bored. I guess. I have a feeling you're just going to keep finding constant inspiration. You don't seem like you're ever going to stop. This is who you are and what you do. And I love it because we need more people like you in the world. Well, Scott, Scott West and Tony were making fun of me earlier about time travel. So, you know, uh, I guess I could start on that too. You could. <laughs> you know, yeah, I don't know how that one figured out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So here we are. We're helping military families, helping veterans. You yourself are a veteran. You've got all sorts of non-emergency medical transport, freight transport. Uh, now you're looking at package, package transport and then housing, feeding, rehabilitating veterans. I love it. There's, there's just no end to it and there doesn't need to be an end. It's like, just keep going. And I know your team is behind you, uh, whether tired or not. <laughs> Exhausted, yeah. Uh, yes, they are. Um, there's no doubt about that. And that's one of the things that having the right team behind you makes everything possible or it makes everything impossible. Yeah. It's just not a question of anything other than, you know, um, uh, part of the, part of that uh, connecting of the world and, and veterans broadcast company. Um, you and I have talked about that before. And, you know, anytime we turn on the news nowadays, it just depends on which news station you watch to know which political affiliation they're with. Uh, there's, a, there's a meme going around Facebook now about, I think it's Tom Brokaw, and how at one time Tom, there was this guy named Tom Brokaw, and all he did was he came on to just read the news. There was no bias on his end. There was no other comments. Um, there was no disrespecting of anything other than just reading the news. And we don't have that anymore. No. Um, and I mean, anywhere you turn on and anywhere you look and anywhere you listen, the only thing that sells is nastiness. Mm -hmm. So you hear about all the nasty. Yeah. You know, very few, you might get a three minute plug and a 30 minute whole deal. A uh, 30 second plug talks about a, a family did this, a guy did this, a girl did this. You know, even when there's a, when there's a, a, a travesty of like a, a shooting or something, you hear 99% about the shooter, but the guy that went in and saved uh, the army guy that went in and saved in, in, in El Paso, um, you see 10 seconds about it, but he saved all kinds of kids from the mall. I think that's, that's what I read. Um, you know, and that feel good of nobody wants to hear that. I know I do. I, I like hearing that stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. But don't find a lot of news sources that sell based upon the goodness. And I think that that's, that's a problem. I think that's one of the things everybody talks about. Why, why is everything so bad and why is, why is everybody going nuts out? Well, there's lots of reasons, I think. There's lots of reasons that today is different than 30 years ago. 
But one of them is no matter where you turn, all everybody's talking about is the nastiness. Nobody's ever talking about the goodness. And I think that that's one of the main problems. So hopefully Veterans Broadcast Company will get involved at that time and fix that. Oh, um, I'd love to be a part of that. And I agree. I mean, because the goodness is there. It's just the loud, the other one, the negativity just seems to be the, the louder right now. That, as you said, that's what is generating the absolutely. attention. Part. And we need to lower the volume on that and raise it on all the positive because there are so many amazing things happening. Um, absolutely. I mean, I know we just we just helped that poor military family. There was a, a family in California. They were robbed while in the middle of a military move from Hawaii to California. Someone stole their car. They stole their husband, the husband's um, medals, medals and uniforms. uniforms, pots and pans. They even took the kids' dirty clothes that were in the, I mean, just unheard of. Who would do this? Um, but we ended up reaching out to the family and helping. And my favorite part was that we were returned or we supplied a new car seat for the three-year-old. It was a Batman car seat. And so many people were excited to see good news and see something like the people are giving back and helping out. And it's just, that's what we need more of that uplift. So that little kid was totally stoked, man. That was cool stuff. Uh, you did a great job with that. Um, you know, it didn't seem like a lot. And I, you know, I, I hope the day comes that we could do a million times that every day for different people that we don't even know, but you know, who, who breaks into a car, steals the car at all, and then you turn around and then realize you got all this stuff and at least go back, drop it off anonymously if you wanted to shop the car. I mean, but, you know, the whole family, PCSing comes, they have nothing. Uh, you get a hold of them. They're scared to death of who you are. They think they're going to get taken again. Now, next thing you know, lo and behold, the little kid has the video of the car seat. It's great. Um, you know, uh, all the military is great to help. It's very satisfying to do so. Um, the flip side is, is that we should have never had to. You know, those people that, that decided it was a good idea to go steal that car, as soon as they saw that stuff in there, man, they, they should have, at the very least returned it, at the very least took the car back, what, whatever the consequences were. But, you know, here you are, a family, and like I, I put in the email, I think when I saw it to you, the, these boys and girls don't make any money to speak of. And then, you know, when you had a family in there and a PCS, uh, they've got nothing. nothing. And, you know, this poor little kid's world was tumbled down, not because of the car, not because of his dad's uniform, not because of the medals. Mm -hmm. Those all those things mean something to all of us as adults. But then, you know, it's car seat. You get in the car seat, you get a couple other odds and ends for the family. Yeah, you feel good that you did it. You feel terrible that you had to because somebody else wasn't raised properly. Right. Um, and, and then the other flip side of that, you know how much we, we enjoy helping people. Um, I wish there was uh, I wish there was a million Officer Thurmans that we could help because every time, you know, Officer Thurman, we helped him. Uh, we acknowledged him, gave him an award, gave him some spendable cash to make his community even better than he was already making it. So we had a very small hand in it, but that little hand, we could do it a million times. Boy, would that be a blessed existence, right? Oh, thank you. Um, and and I'm sure that the kids. I haven't seen any videos. I don't know if we got any from him with some of the stuff with the kids and stuff. But you know, he's he's uh, community advocate award is great. That man is the, is the community advocate. I mean, he's amazing. So uh, hopefully he did good. Hopefully he's continuing to do good. But I would really love to get to a place with all these companies. Um, where we can do a million times that per day. I, I, nothing would make me happier. You know, if we made no money, but somehow could do that a million times a day, and I had to do it for the next 20 years, I would sign up right now. I know you would. And you know, that's my favorite part of the job is when you say, hey, there's this great person or this military family needs help, reach out to them mm -hmm. and I'll find them, I'll reach out to them. And they always at first kind of pause a minute and think, wait, this sounds too good to be true. Is this real? Yes, it is. You won an award or we're covering your Christmas expenses or we're flying you home to see family. Um, it's it's just unreal. So I love it. Thank you for spreading all this amazing love into the world. I'm very happy to be a part of it. Well, we're looking forward to a million times more of that uh, than we currently do because that would make me happy. Fantastic. Well, gosh, I think we covered a lot of the amazing things we've got in the works. I, I can't even imagine what it's like in your brain right now. With, <laughs> well, I'm thinking that I got 79 things already that since we've been sitting for, what, 30 minutes, that I got 79 more things pop in my head. You know, so it's just a question of put them in priority order and, and 
make sure that you have, again, the right team, uh, the people around you trying to build things. If you don't have the right people, it doesn't work that well. If you've got the right core people, and employees are always a challenge. Um, California uh, has some very, very significant challenges when it comes with employees. Trying to get everybody to understand the mission and maybe, I don't expect everybody to bleed it, but to get them to at least be thankful that they're part of it, that would probably be a real uh, the biggest hurdle. Um, getting them to show up on time. And this is employees overall. I'm getting people that care getting people that want to work together, getting people that that will go above and beyond. One of the things that Wounded Warrior, and I don't know if you know this, Wounded Warrior Foundation, who did a lot of good for our vets. I know that they had some negative press about how much money the CEO spent and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things that they did was every employee had the ability for goodwill, and I believe the number was $250 a day for a veteran in need, without question. And they all had a debit card or a credit card or whatever the hell they had. So they can see a veteran on the street and go get them a hotel room. They can see a veteran on the street and go get them a meal. Without question, there was no approval process for that, but that was their mission. So based upon the um, that opportunity for them, I think that was a real good thing. And I would love to promote that kind of, of spirit amongst us because we all come across day to day uh, veterans in need of something. So that, that I think would make me real happy if we could do something like that. I would love that. And that just the numbers would increase suddenly because it's not just one off here and there. It's everybody every day with this opportunity to give back. Absolutely. Okay. That's good. <laughs> well, I love it. I, I feel like we're definitely, we, I was, I would say we're a company to watch. We're many. We're, we got, you've just got your hand in every cookie jar here. I love it. Just creating so much good for the world, for military families, for veterans, and just for mankind in general. I, I feel like you're really paying it forward, and it's very important. Again, we need more people like you in the world, Chris. So, thank you. Well, so I appreciate that. That's very kind. I wish that were true, but uh, you know, again, uh, all the stuff that we come up with. Uh, I told you we're working on a proprietary power source for the villages. Uh, I want to make that stuff kind of like Elon Musk does, all open and scale, available for anybody to replicate. Um, I think that's important. Um, working together to accomplish goals, many people, many hands make light work. So working, letting people work together on their own thing, their own ideas. Hey, buddy, how are you? And, um, you know, um, I'm actually talking with a guy that I found on YouTube uh, that builds things out of 3D printers. And, you know, one of the things that he built was a Tesla turbine. That's exactly what I'm thinking for the villages to increase the power output. And him and I have been cooperating over some general ideas about turning a Tesla turbine into a um, basically an alternator. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool stuff. This guy's pretty sharp. Sure. Um, and so, yeah, so hopefully we can work together and, and get something grand out of it and then pass along to others so they can improve it even more and the world's a better place. Um, that's the goal. That's the goal with everything that we do. Make a difference and make it better. That's it. Phenomenal. <laughs> well, yeah. fantastic. Well, I thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Do you, do you feel like we covered everything? To yeah, I don't think that there's a ton more. Um, you know, there's always stuff that's that can be dug into deeper. Uh, you know, how you gonna do this? How you gonna do that? How you gonna do this? Uh, everybody gets uh, a little frustrated with me at times. I think because everything's in my brain. Sometimes I can't articulate it. Even I can build it. Um, I can do it, but sometimes I can't articulate it. So, um, if anything, if I, if I, the one thing I need to work on better is being able to articulate things so that I can get more help on the projects that I do. Um, and if I could do that, then obviously that would be a lot easier as well. So no, you know, again, I'm, I'm excited about everything that we've done. I'm excited about everything that we got going on. And I'm even more excited about what the future holds because, you know, when I tell people I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this or I'm going to do this and this, how we're going to, hey, you know, then they all, you know, I told you the glazed over look sometimes and I get, yeah, sure. And all of a sudden it works. Yeah. And then they're like, 
oh, that, yeah. And then you get to the point where people just assume it's going to work because I tell them it's going to work. And then there's like no more surprise. <laughs> you know, Tony and Scott West were talking about the other day. It's like, yeah, no, if you tell us you're going to do it, we know you're going to do it. True. You're yep. Yeah. And I told him I was going to bring a fuel deal across the board that's going to save us uh, about $20,000 a month in fuel. Wow. And when I started it, uh, which was less than a month ago, they said, oh, yeah, sure. And then I get an email and uh, where the, the guy agreed and the math of it. And they're like, yeah, you told us you were going to. No surprise. So, yeah, so a little fun. Um, but uh, no, uh, I just love everything, everything that we're doing. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And you know what? I feel like you've done a wonderful job of articulating. And if you think of more things later, that just gives me another excuse to interview you again at a future date. I can't wait to uh, to uh, build the first house and put uh, cameras in it uh, uh, and then uh, film and monitor the uh, broadcast that first week in the village. Uh, I want to know how it's going to go. Uh, I'm excited about being the guinea pig for that whole ordeal. That's going to be incredible, and it's going to be fascinating to watch. I'm certainly looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Jackie, I sure do appreciate your time. You have a great day. Keep making everything good. All right, you too, Chris. Thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you have a wonderful day, Chris. Thanks again for your time. See you guys.